The computer players in Mario Kart 64 do not play fair. In fact, they cheat so hard that you'd swear someone edited their files and forgot to disable them. From speed boosts to driving through walls and ignoring items, they do everything, including a CPU-only skip. In fact, before you begin a race, the game is already stacking the deck against you as it selects two characters that will act as your steroid-infused rivals. Rival characters are coincidentally selected on the character select screen the moment you pick your racer, with rival pairings being somewhat based on who you pick. So Toad will never see Wario or Luigi as rivals, while Mario can, but Toad will see Luigi and Wario. So why does the order matter? Not all rivals are created equal, and in this case, one will be the primary rival, with the other being the secondary. All other CPUs are generic, with no special abilities, so I'll be referring to them as Martys for the rest of the video. Both rivals are given special rubber banding abilities that increase their top speed and handling, allowing them to keep pace with the player. If we look at handling, the CPUs aren't programmed to do many turbos, the mechanic that lets players take tight corners and rewards them with a speed boost. The game instead lets rival characters take corners as tight as they want, with no penalty to speed. If this wasn't bad enough, if a rival isn't in a position to take a corner without hitting the wall, they will turn off collision and drive through the wall without any penalties. And on tracks like Toad's Turnpike, where there are moving hazards, things get even more weird. But we'll get to that in a bit. For now, let's focus on speed, which has three different maximums for rivals and Martys. If a rival is a certain distance behind you, they will use their maximum top speed. The exact value varies, but it's higher than the player's base maximum of 70, which lets the rivals catch up to you fairly easily. When a rival overtakes a player, two things will happen. If they are in first or second, their maximum speed will be reduced, which allows you to catch up. But if they're further down in the pack, they'll keep their top speed until they reach first or second. Martys are even more interesting, as they will go top speed at all times. But if they get too close to the primary rival, another special ability kicks in. When a Marty approaches a primary rival, a speed reduction is forced upon them, capping their speed to a lower maximum, which prevents them from catching the rivals. You can see this in action by toggling the character placement UI, as the two rivals will be clearly ahead of the Martys, with no ground ever being gained on them. The only exception to the slowdown mechanic is when a Marty is near an area where they need to make a jump, as they will ignore the reduction and get up to speed so they don't fall in the hazards. The speed reduction aura is quite powerful, but what happens if you interfere with a rival and force them to the back? If you harass the primary rival with items and put it into 8th place, the Martys will never hit the trigger that slows them down, so they will drive at top speed until the rival catches up and overtakes them, as the top speed for the rival is slightly higher than the top speed of the Martys. Another interesting cheat the rivals use is matching your speed while using boost items. Here's the placement UI when using a star or mushroom. As you can see, the rivals keep pace no matter how fast you go. Since we are on the topic of items, this would have been a great transition. But there's one more thing we need to cover, and that's CPU pathing. Regardless of if a CPU is a rival or a Marty, they will get assigned to one of the three paths that are programmed into the track left, middle, and right. Based upon where they start on the first track of a Grand Prix, their path will change, as each starting position will assign them to a specific path. Except on Yoshi Valley, where due to the branching paths of the track itself, the CPUs get assigned to one of four unique paths to navigate the course. So how does pathing help them cheat? On every track, the path assignments only serve to stop the CPUs from bumping into each other to avoid track congestion. Except on Toad's Turnpike, where they break the pathing rule constantly. Toad's Turnpike is the only course with hazards that move around the track as it's filled with vehicles. And rather than have the CPUs constantly crash into cars, the devs coded them to switch paths if a vehicle is detected in its lane. This is a good fix to avoid a cluster truck on the track, and on its own doesn't qualify as cheating as they will still get launched if they collide with a vehicle, provided that they are on screen. If a computer player is off screen, it gets another ability which puts it at Super Saiyan 3 where it's no longer affected by vehicle collision. This lets them stay on their current path and drive through cars, allowing rivals to catch up to you even faster. Other tracks have hazards as well, and using a special camera, we can see that while off screen, the CPUs will be affected by the rocks on Chaco Mountain, the snowmen on Frap Snowland, the egg on Yoshi Valley, and the plants on Mario and Royal Raceway. But there are exceptions. On Calamari Desert, the CPUs will ignore the train while off screen, along with the porcupines on Yoshi Valley. But the thwomps on Bowser's Castle are perhaps the most 
most surprising, as while they will drive through the thwomps if they aren't on camera, they will still be flattened if they get squashed. Hazards aren't the only thing that have different off-screen behavior, which brings us to items, the CPU's ace in the hole when it comes to cheating. While on screen, the behavior from CPUs isn't incredibly different from what happens to a player when they're hit by an item, so let's have a look. Red and green shells cause the same effect but to a different degree, with red shells sending anyone hit flying into the air with a tumble while green shells do the same, but with reduced height. If hit by a lightning bolt, the full shrinking animation plays for the CPUs, and if they're squished, the entire animation of them being flattened will play out. If a CPU is struck by a banana on camera, they will immediately stop and spin in place instead of sliding, while a player will spin out and slide for a small distance before coming to a stop. So while on screen, only the banana has a different behavior from what happens to a player, but off-screen, things happen a lot differently. If we look at green shells, the off-screen behavior removes the height but keeps the tumble, resulting in a quicker recovery time. Red shells are a bit different, however, as the CPU will come to a complete stop, then resume racing, with no tumble or height resulting from the hit. If you look at the progress UI, you can see this play out as well, as a character hit with a red shell on screen will have their portrait jump up and down, but if they're hit while off-screen, the portrait will only make a little dip, then resume making progress on the track. The AI will also drive into the the fake item box without trying to avoid it, and when struck on screen, they're sent straight into the air while tumbling. But if they collide with one off screen, they suffer the same effect as hitting a red shell. When it comes to the bolt, they still receive the shrink animation while off screen, but if they are flattened by another CPU or the player, they recover instantly rather than playing out the full animation where they're flat and float to the ground. On Yoshi Valley, the bolt can also cause CPUs to fall off the track. If they're being observed, an invisible lackey 2 will come and pick them up. But if they're off screen when this occurs, they will immediately snap back to the track with minimal time loss. When it comes to the most famous item in Mario Kart, any racer hit by the blue shell will be sent flying with a tumble effect while on screen. But if you're in 8th place and use a blue shell, it will have the same effect as a red and bring any CPU to use it hits to a stop before they resume, rendering the most devastating item to the same status as a common red shell. Before we get to the banana, there are exceptions to the on-screen off-screen state, which are in sections where CPUs will likely be seen by the player from another area, as the game has the CPUs behave as if they are always on screen. Almost all of these are near jumps, as Frapp Snowland, Wario Stadium, Royal Raceway, and Bowser's Castle all have ramp sections, and it's likely these were included in an attempt to stop players from seeing the CPUs cheat, as there's a chance they will be seen by the player when they should be off screen. There are additional areas like this, with the hairpin corner on Royal Raceway being a prime example, as the CPUs take full hits here even while off screen. It's not known why this area was coded this way, but it's a key component in the CPU-only shortcut, which means it's finally time to talk about the banana. The banana peel is the most powerful item for CPUs in the entire game, and its power lies in how they cheat when they're hit. As previously mentioned, the banana's on-screen behavior has CPUs stop and spin in place, but oddly enough, the off-screen behavior has them copy what happens to player characters when they're hit by a banana, as they'll slide and spin for a short distance. You might think that a sliding spin-out doesn't count as cheating, but while in this state, they ignore collisions with walls as well, which unlocks their greatest power, the ability to do CPU-only shortcuts. In this clip, Yoshi has cleared the stairs and made it into the courtyard where disaster strikes. Wario flies out of the wall and slams into him. While CPUs can drive through walls, this only applies when they are cutting corners near the path they're on, and no path runs through the walls in the stairway section to the courtyard. The only conceivable way that Wario could have went through two walls was by another CPU laying a banana just before he arrived. This would cause him to slide since he's off screen, and due to CPUs ignoring collision while banana sliding, he slips through the two walls and slams into Yoshi. This is just a minor shortcut however, as it only skips the stairs and courtyard for a two second time save, and it can be done by humans with the help of a mushroom and a technical understanding of how walls work. But I promised you a CPU only shortcut, and for that, we need to head to Royal Raceway. On the hairpin before the jump, the track has a wall on the corner so you can't hop over the hill and skip the turn entirely. But if a computer player is struck by a banana at the right angle as they enter the hairpin, they will slide over the water or go through the wall, and then the fun begins. 
What happens next isn't understood very well, as there hasn't been much research into how Lackey 2 rescues CPUs, but after careening through the wall or out into the water, the computer will get teleported further down the track. In this clip, you can see Yoshi in first place, but suddenly his dot stops moving on the map, which is likely from hitting a banana and being sent out of bounds through the wall. You'll see his dot disappear and then reappear behind the finish line, with Yoshi now in first, having skipped the majority of the lab. How far ahead the CPUs are warped appears to be random, and in some cases, they even get teleported to the finish line. Finish line teleport glitches are known about, and they occur when Lackey 2 can't find a path marker to drop you on. In this case, world famous runner Abney theorizes that the CPU became associated with a path marker that's mid air on the jump. Lackey 2 can't put you down on a path marker in mid-air, so he looks for the last path marker you were associated with. But since the last place the game recognized you as being present was the mid-air jump, he fails to find a path marker. And when this happens, he's instructed to place you at the finish line as a failsafe, which results in a shortcut that only CPUs can perform. All of this begs one question. Why make the CPUs cheat in the first place? For rival selection and speed buffs, the reason was to make the game competitive, as those features serve to keep you on your toes. But the item cheating features aren't necessarily for this reason alone. While it is true that CPUs can keep pace easier if they aren't receiving full damage from items, the reality is that the game was pushing the limits of the hardware, and if you've ever played 4 player mode, you've probably encountered lag. By reducing the amount of physics interactions that needed to be calculated for the CPUs, this lessened the load on the hardware and allowed players to have a lag-free experience. Well, most of the time. The developers really applied the observer effect from physics and created Schrodinger's AI, as their behavior is completely different once observed. But if you want to observe something cool in future videos, become a patron and see your name appear in the credits. And I hope to see you in the next exciting episode of Abisoft Z.